Eric. Hey, Charles. How are you doing? I'm doing well, man. Good. So listen, congratulations on the release of our excellent Dev Labs today. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Yeah, man. yeah, that's a big milestone. Yeah. Absolutely. So you know, I want to try something different. Uh, we've never done this before. I want to do an RX overview in 15 minutes. Perfect. Okay. You should be able to do that. So let's start from ground zero. Okay. Why? Why did you do RX? What's going on here? Okay. Well, so one of my favorite kind of you know, hobbies is these uh, so-called uh, Raven tests. Okay. Um, and the idea of these tests is that you you know you get uh, a, a screen like this with some uh, pictures, and then you have to kind of figure out you know what is the missing picture. Okay. Now the the real underlying principle here is that you're looking for commonalities between the different pictures. In this case, you know, it, it's quite simple. I hope that you know that this <laughs> one is the right one. But you see, as you're looking at the correspondence, and this is the reason why you know I. Um, came up with, or we, I should say, came up with Rx. Uh -huh. It's the quest to find the commonality between things. So if you look at, there's multiple commonalities. If you look at like collections, they all are unified by I enumerable. Okay. Uh, arrays, lists, they all implement I enumerable. Now, if you look at the, these collections, they are pool collections. So if you have an array, you can, and you, you implement I enumerable, you say move next, move next, move next. You're kind of pulling the elements out. Um, now, if you look at the uh, RX style collections, which are push collections, which are collections where the producer pushes values at you. Mm -hmm. um, and again, there's uh, by coming up with an interface that unifies um, those kind of collections, now you can start talking about uh, operations that work for all these collections. Um, and then um, examples of these kind of push collections are event streams or asynchronous computations or even normal innumerable collections you can turn them into observable collections and vice versa so with this we have unified this whole notion of collection whether it's push or pull and you can do all the same operations over them um, so it's kind of you know that we filled in this kind of missing gap here and once you see it it, it looks kind of obvious but you know just to find the right one is, is uh, is not easy. Perfect. So that's why. Okay. That's I think right. everybody understands that Good. now. Now we're going to get into what? Okay. What is Rx? So what is Rx? Rx is basically um, a, a two uh, interfaces, mm -hmm. um, um, iObservable and iObserver, um, that correspond to the two enumerable interfaces, iEnumerable and iEnumerator. And just like iEnumerable and iEnumerator have all the standard link sequence operators like select, select many, where, group by, all of these, we have also um, implemented those for observable. Um, so let me draw the picture here. Um, if here on the side we have enumerable collections, So these are pull, and then here we have push, and these are observable collections. And then here we have the, the um, link standard query operators, and what we did is we implemented the link standard query operators also for um, Observables. Okay. Now, if you look at when, when we were looking at these operators, we had some extras here, some operators that we needed that were useful for these collections. So, what we have done for symmetry, we also, um, as an added bonus, we we kind of filled out this picture to add some extra operators here, also to i enumerables. Nice. Um, now, the other thing that we're doing is um, if you look at uh, this here, under the covers there's concurrency. So there are certain operators here that introduce concurrency. And for that we um, use um, PFX. So um, all the concurrency in, in um, Rx is done with PFX. All and right. the name Rx uh, was inspired also by PFX. So Excellent. Um, all the concurrency is done uh, via task of T, etc. So that's a, a, a very nice way. So this kind of layers on top of that. Excellent. Good. So that was the you know what we what we will give you. Perfect. 
Now let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, and again, people who are watching this, uh, if you've seen the Brian Beckman one and the Wes one and several other ones, yep. just understand that this is a release overview. And so we're yep. not going to dig into all this stuff. You can go watch that again if you want. Yep. So let's talk about some scenarios. Okay. Let's talk about some scenarios. Um, I'll erase this. And the main scenario where, where this all came from, the reason you know why we started to look at this, is to build distributed cloud-based applications. And if you're looking at the cloud-based application, the, well, there's the client, and then there's the cloud here, with web services. Now there's two interesting um, observations. First of all, that the client has to communicate um, with the server, uh, with the cloud, mm -hmm. and this is where you need asynchronous um, computation. And the reason you want to do this asynchronous is because there's network latency. So you don't want to make a synchronous call and get blocked on this side. Sure. So once you move to the cloud, you have to deal with asynchronous computations. Now on the client, that's the kind of traditional thing. If you have your UI here, um, you know, XAML or Silverlight with your mouse and, and you know, whatever, there's a button here. That is event-based. So here you have event-based and that's just a, it's your UI. Okay. All right. So now, if you look at programs like this, there's two things that you need to deal with. You need to do asynchronous computations and combine them with event-driven UI. And that's exactly the scenario that RX um, supports, because both of them are examples of push-based collections. If you look at event-based um, UI, that's maybe the, the easiest to see. It, you can view your mouse as in a collection of mouse move events. And they are pushed at you. So that's the idea of a push-based stream coming from the UI. But in a similar way, you can look at an asynchronous computation as a, as a push-based collection, where you, know, you make a request and at some point the response will be pushed at you. So that's a, a, a computation, and maybe even the um, if you look at XML HTTP, it will send you events, progress events. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you know, I'm I'm still working, I'm still working, and then it gives you the value. So an asynchronous computation can also be viewed as a um, push-based collection. And the way we combine these two is by writing here link queries um, that join. Um, event-based and asynchronous computations. Excellent. Um, so that's the, the that's the idea. We we were using link to coordinate these asynchronous and event-based uh, computations. Perfect. And in terms of what's coming, um, we will um, keep evolving the um, what we ship on sure. Dev Labs. And um, one of the things that you know I. I, I I'm kind of teasing you here. Yeah. We'll also uh, come out with a solution where you can do the glue these asynchronous computations in a different way um, beyond link. Mm. Um, so keep tuned for that. Okay. Um, because we will kind of you know we we keep kind of you know um, in inventing stuff and um, showing it to to uh, our developers to try it out to see if this is a good idea. Absolutely. Um, and again, as I said. Um, this is all based on, on uh, PFX, so all the concurrency in this whole system will be done using Task of T and all the other goodness. Uh, That's awesome. And what people may not know, since we're very transparent here, is you guys actually implemented on top of PX in record time. Yes. Which speaks volumes. Yes, yes. That was I must <laughs> say that was that was amazing. Um, within you know once we um, made the decision, um, in, in in within ten days. We had everything working on, on, on top of PFX. That was uh, really cool. Excellent. So now let's continue here with, yep. uh, I think we've, you know, we've covered the basics. Um, let's talk about, I mean, I think it might be kind of obvious you know, what the benefits are, but let's be explicit about, hey, I'm a developer. Uh, wh how does this benefit me as a composer of algorithms? Let's, let's talk about that. Yeah. So that's a very good question. So um, if you look at this problem domain, 
these are hard things. So, you know, dealing with asynchronous computation is a hard thing, and you have to deal there with um, errors and timeouts. For example, you know, what happens if you're making a request to the web server and it doesn't come back? So what you want to do is you want to be able to say, oh, well, if it doesn't come back within one second, mm. I want to cancel the request and, and have a timeout. Um, another thing is if you look at um, the UI here, um, say that you're doing um, like a dictionary example where yeah. every time you, you, you type something here, you want to look it up in the dictionary. Well, if you're typing really fast, you don't want to send for each keystroke um, a uh, request to the server. So you want to calm down the event stream and only when the user pauses, you want to do you, you want to send the request. It's the same as in Visual Studio. IntelliSense is also kind of calming down. Not at every keystroke, you know, you get a drop down, but it's like when you when you pause a little bit, it will will show up. So all these kind of you know reusable components that you need to glue together these computations, that is what what we give you. Um, and if you look at the implementation, it's um, I, I I should say. The, the implementation is more subtle than for enumerables, especially because of concurrency. Uh -huh. um, and so we take away a lot of the concerns um, with locking and trying to do, you know, to deal with this concurrency. Those are encapsulated, these patterns are now encapsulated in, in the sequence operators that we deliver. Excellent. So you get a lot of reusable code that you can use to glue together your, your uh, computations. The other advantage, of course, is that all the knowledge that you have about link mm -hmm. will just apply. So in order to understand queries that you write over observable collections, you can just pretend that they are just innumerable collections and you, you see that they work and then you know, okay, now I know what they do. So it's, it's also a reuse of knowledge. All the investments that you've made in C Sharp and VB and link will just carry over from the pool-based world that we have been programming in, you know, for a long time now to the new world of, of asynchronous computations. Outstanding. And that is uh, that is the world that we are heading in. Yes, exactly. Awesome. So get the bits, download them, yep. and we can get feedback right back to Eric. And yes, you. and we will be very active on the forums and, you know, there will be many more Channel 9 uh, videos. Uh -huh. um, we will also um, uh, give you some puzzles. Excellent. Where we have like little sample programs that we say, okay, try to write this using Rx. Mm -hmm. And also, as I said, keep tuned because we will be um, releasing more new features uh, once this is out. Um, and, and you will be really happy, I'm, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> because there's some exciting stuff still in the pipeline. Right on. Well, hey, great job, Eric. Okay. Congratulations a lot. to you and your incredible team of wizards. Uh, yep. Uh, right on, buddy. Thank Take you. Take care.